And I understand that there is a, a similar effort now right. underway in New York City. And I think there's a, a larger, uh, there's more support in New York City um, than elsewhere in the country for this. I think there's more skepticism about the official story there. Yeah, what's going on in New York City right now? Um, there's an organization, um, I think it's called um, NYCCAN, New York City Coalition um, for Accountability Now, I believe is what it's called. And they're collecting petitions, uh, signatures. Um, they've already got, I believe, about 35,000, which is more than enough um, to get it on the ballot unless um, the city council vetoes it, which is possible. Um, so that's why they're trying to get more uh, signatures. They need another um, 40,000 or another 35,000 approximately um, to, uh, to have a veto-proof um, petition, essentially. And that would put on the ballot um, a question of, of um, should we have a, a, um, a new investigation? And it's a particular kind of uh, investigation that is, is articulated there. It would be a, a, um, a commission that's um, largely pre-selected pre um, and they would go wherever the evidence leads them. They don't have any um, preformed conclusions. Um, and I, I, I suspect that this this would pass if if they get this on this ballot uh, on the ballot that that I suspect that it will pass and that we will have a, a commission in New York City, um, a people's commission investigating this. Now, so uh, what to do about that? I mean, if if um, I don't know when people are, are um, going to see this, um, but uh, if if you know anybody in in New York City. Um, uh, you might want to let them know that, that this petition exists so they can get their name on it. Or um, uh, if you want to send 25 bucks and su in support of the effort to collect these signatures, that, would, that, um, that could help. This is uh, mind-boggling to me that uh, 35,000 uh, citizens in New York where, where the trade centers collapsed are asking for a criminal investigation to find out what really happened, and our government doesn't want to do it? <laughs> what does this mean? I, I can't understand how that could be. Yeah. Well, I mean, I certainly have, <laughs> have reasons to think, you know, and certainly if there was, I, there's, there's complicity and then there's uh, complicity. I mean, there's level, layers of this. I mean, there's a lot of people um, who, um, you know, after the fact, have gone along with things that um, that make them would make them look bad um, if the truth came out on this. I think so. There's a lot of reasons for people uh, in high places to 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 not want this to happen. So a few people might look bad in our government, but uh, how about the three thousand people that were killed in the trade center yeah. and all their relatives? And how about the uh, uh, how many thousands now of our soldiers have been killed in Iraq and Afghanistan? And if 9-11 didn't happen the way it was portrayed to happen, what are we doing in Iraq and Afghanistan? What's the war on terror all about? What, what's the Patriot Act all about? I mean, the, the, um, why are we torturing people? I mean, so many things. People say, well, 9-11, you know, it happened a long time ago or whatever. Uh, is, you know, why are you so interested in that? How can you be an informed person about what's going on in the world if you're fundamentally wrong about what happened on that day? Every, you know, so much of what we're doing in, in um, um, foreign policy is connected to, to that day and a dubious interpretation of what happened. In paragraph three of the, uh, the letter that went out to uh, uh, the people that I mentioned in Vermont here, it says, all Americans have the moral obligation to question the premise of the war on terror, given all that our government has done based upon that premise, given the fact that so much that the Bush administration told us has turned out to be false, given that the anthrax attacks are now known to be an inside job, and given that Senator Leahy, among others, doubts the conclusion that Dr. Bruce Ivins was the sole perpetrator of the anthrax attacks. 
with good reason. We have researched this premise of the war on terror in depth, and we truly we are truly alarmed by what we have found. While we do not at all agree with what actually did happen on 9-11-01, nor on the likely extent of the complicity of U.S. government officials, ranging from an unexplained and possibly deliberate failure to prevent the attacks to actual involvement in the engineering thereof, the following statements are undeniable. And it goes on to say, uh, the 9-11 Commission failed to report the truth. It never questioned the unsupported assertion that al-Qaeda alone was responsible for the attacks, and it ignored tremendous quantities of credible evidence contrary to that assertion. For example, the 9-11 Commission concluded that the funding of the terrorists was of little practical significance, ignoring reports that the head of Pakistan's intelligence service arranged for a wire transfer of $100,000 to alleged 9-11 ringleader Mohammed Atta just before 9-11. Um, yeah, and that last little bit is something that's very well documented in this, in this um, video. I think that particular thing they, co they cover quite well. The, the wiring of the money to Atta, and it's being traced back to um, um, the Pakistani ISI, and um, how the media uh, uh, played up that story at the point in which um, it was only traced to somebody who had um, connections with al-Qaeda. So it was all of a sudden, oh, hey, you know, hey, there's, this money was sent to uh, Mohammed Atta, and there's where, and so it was. It was evidence for um, Al Qaeda was behind this, and then when it got traced further back to to Pakistani <laughs> intelligence, all of a sudden that story first got kind of obscured. The people's names kept keep being spelled differently in different places, and it was like I was talking about the same people and so on, um, and then it just sort of, you know, dropped out and went down the memory hole. <laughs> it's really, I mean, the media has just, um, they've been horrible on this. Which is why, I mean, people watching this already know that, I suppose. So why shows like this are, are so important to give people an alternative to, to uh, the mainstream, you know, drumbeat of, of whatever is, um, you know, politically um, um, advantageous to, to the corporations that run those those programs. We're coming to you on, uh, on public access TV, and we have no commercials. There's, uh, there's no uh, corporate capitalist behind us <laughs> telling us what, uh, what to say. So um, you can see what happened in, uh, in Washington on the health care issue. Uh, the single-payer uh, uh, solution, which almost everyone in the country wants, isn't even on the table because the, the big money interests, the capitalists, don't support it. All the really good um, solutions are systematically ignored. Like with the, with the uh, crisis, uh, economic crisis, um, I mean, nobody is topic, talking publicly about um, like having a, a micro tax on stock transactions. Now, um, Senator, uh, not Senator, but Representative. Um, uh, Peter DeFazio of Oregon, I believe, um, was, was talking about this. But he co it couldn't get any traction, and it uh, couldn't get any media attention, and so on. Um, but uh, why not? Obviously, I mean, who's, who, who are the people um, who would be paying that tax? Um, the people who are uh, trading large um, uh, quantities of stock are obviously going to be paying uh, more money than people who don't have any stock or trade um, such a small amount that it, that it doesn't um, amount to much. So it would be a, a very pro progressive tax. You couldn't argue that it was unfair. I mean, it was, everybody pays the same percentage. In, in that sense, it's not even progressive, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's not, it's not on the table. It's not um, worthy of discussion. It's not uh, included in the conversation. Another issue that the, uh, the media presents to us in a deceptive fashion is the issue of human rights. Hmm. Um, now, I understand that you, uh, you've studied in China. Um, the Chinese view of human rights is quite different from ours. Uh, for instance, in China, they would tell us that uh, 
uh, we have a human right to health care, and we have a human right to, uh, uh, to have enough to eat. We have a human right to uh, an education. Uh, we have a human right to, uh, to uh, housing. 